Hey guys, we're going to start uh, working with scratch board this week, which is pretty exciting. So we have been doing our white on black paper drawings to prepare ourselves for the building of light with line and with light line. And with the scratch board, what you're doing is you're actually carving into a surface of clay board that's been covered in ink. And this is, you should have three of them that came in a pack um, with this on top. So um, you've got your fresh clay board. You should have also been uh, in your kit, received the scratch board knife. And that is this tool here. And it also comes with two blades. So it comes with this one in there. Don't forget to look for this one because sometimes we miss that in the kit. Um, and basically they are interchangeable inside this little handle. Um, so I'll show you how they work um, on your first clay board. You're gonna play around and you're gonna have fun um, just seeing what this tool does without worrying too much about the end result, just building and playing with the, the uh, blank board. So I've already started to do that here, as you can see, um, building with my uh, fine lines. And this tool here, primarily, um, showing how you just simply carve out your lights with your cross contour and cross hatching to build light. And it can be very subtle and soft. You can build tone really with wide lines or you can just like with cross uh, contour and cross hatching with the white charcoal, you can build that by, by continuing to cross and keep crossing until you can get to a very light white. So it's really the same concept as with your white charcoal. Um, the difference is that, of course, it's a very fine line and that it feels much more permanent because you can't erase it. Um, but we'll talk about that in a minute and ways to mitigate that. So ultimately, clay board is a white surface with ink covering it and often artists actually work on top of a white clay board and apply their own ink and that gives a lot of control um, to a final image so if this is something that you fall in love with as a method let me know and I'll, I'll push you in the direction of the next step um, which is working directly on the clay board but for now we've got these nicely prepared um, panels to work with so so again this tool here Pretty simple, basically, you know, it's like using a very fine tip pen with different pressures, you can get different results, but you know, it's not much different than any other drawing tool in terms of that, that uh, range that you're gonna get. Um, if you press much harder, you will get more defined uh, lighter lines, and if you press lighter, you'll get less. Um, you can kind of scrape with the edge of this tool and get a much thicker line. So if you've got a whole area that you want to remove, you use the edge of this tool to, to get that. And another way you can do that is by using the scraping tool here. And that does the same thing. I think it actually is a little bit more efficient. Um, in scraping out larger areas of light. So if you, and you can go a little bit lighter on some of these and get a kind of different type of scratchy feeling than you did with the tip of this tool. Um, and so these are your, your main drawing implements here. Um, another potential, and this is not in your kit, is that you can use some sandpaper, and this is a very fine, fine grit. I think it's 320. Um, if you happen to have some and wanna play with it, 
I just ripped off a, a tiny piece of it here and um, I actually used it here as well. If you wanna play with the sort of smoky quality that it can give, um, if you go over to the art building, if you happen to be on campus, you might be able to get um, a little bit of it if you ask around. Um, and you wanna make sure that you wipe off because that's what comes off is the, the ink so that you don't wipe it into your whole drawing and ruin all the whites that you already have because that could happen too. But that gives a different effect um, in terms of pulling out lights, a much more atmospheric sort of all over white than the whites that you carve out or the whites that you hatch out. Um, another thing that is worth mentioning, once you kind of get your whites in there, and I think this should be used fairly um, minimally, but you can go in with your black pens and work on top of areas that are white. So if I wanted, if this was feeling too light and I really wanted to come back in and pull darkness in around here and define a shape differently and play with this uh, light line here, I can do this here and you can go back in and, and draw in. The reason that I say use it minimally at first is because it doesn't exactly mimic the clay board. So depending on what you've got going um, in terms of your image and, and the result you want, you know, this, this ink will stand out a bit differently than the ink on the clay board, but it, it matches pretty well. It will just have a different sheen. Um, but it's a, it's a really nice backup and also, um, once you feel like you understand what the image is or you wanna make some corrections, you can definitely use this um, ink pen. And, you know, inside the image, you can make, so if you're doing something like a portrait, it's gonna feel less daunting to know that you can make adjustments um, to features and such that are pretty drastic with this tool here. And you can continue to hatch into what you've already started with. Um, you can also use the pen uh, in the beginning to do some drawing of the image beforehand. These are just little freehand heads out of my, out of my imagination. Um, but if you were working again with something very specific, you could use the black pen uh, on the ink board to sort of sketch out your image or your idea before you go in, um, maybe even thinking about which way some of the hatching will go. And then when you go in with your tool, you know, you'll have something to go on. So it, it will feel a little bit more um, secure that way. You are working with pen, so, you know, uh, it, it's permanent, but you know that even if you change it a bit, it'll kind of blend in with um, the rest of the ink, especially if it's image an image that it has a lot in it, um, a lot of complexity. So, um, you can also, of course, when say you've gone in and worked with the ink going here and then you're like, well, actually I don't want it to be so much there. You can then scratch again away at that ink. Um, so don't feel like what you do here, you can't pull out, okay? Um, you will run out of, of your ink pretty quickly if you use it to fill up whole areas of an image, so kind of be aware of that. And you will see right here that if you're trying to fill in an area that's been hatched, you're still gonna get some of those hatch marks. At least I hope you can see some of this. Um, but you can also go back in. And it can start to create some really interesting atmospheric um, tonal value as opposed to 
just the scratch board. Um, using just the scratch board tool is also really effective um, for images. You know, these are images that I think are in the slideshow that I'm sending you along that I just did while looking at my son watching TV a while back. Um, so you can see that it's a it, it it's a, a darker image because I've only scratched out certain lights. So it was, it's a nighttime sort of moment of of light only hitting certain areas. And I'm very interested in the buildup of cross contour lines to define the, the form. Um, and so, you know, even beginning with just using this, I think I used a tiny bit of the ink pen to make some adjustments there in the eye. And I was also, for work that I've been doing, studying swimmers and female swimmers in particular. So I did also a uh, woodcut of a swimmer and I used scratch board as a preliminary to get um, toward the idea of using light as the thing you're carving out, which is what a woodcut does. And so I'll show you some images in, in, your, in the, um, preparatory materials that are woodcut images. And that's because really it's a uh, woodcut is the same idea as scratch board, except for that you're carving away at the wood and then pouring ink over it, pressing paper on and getting a, a wood cut out of that. Um, as opposed to an etching where you're carving into a metal plate and ink goes into the lines and then you get more of what a traditional drawing would look like, an ink drawing. Um, with all the variations of printmaking. So I wanted to just show you um, these also um, and in the simplicity of it, but showing you the range that you can get with your pen, with a little piece of sandpaper if you wanna play with that if you can, and your tool with the two different um, tips that should work there. Um, pencil on here does not erase well if you use pencil to do your underdrawing, and then you go to erase it. Um, it does work, but what it'll do, and I don't know if you'll see it, but it really changes the surface of the ink. It kind of rubs it into a strange glare, so I don't recommend that. All right, so I'll move on to the next video, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about what you're gonna do and maybe how. I hope this was helpful.